What's going on everybody? AB2 phones here. There's only a few Qi2 MagSafe wireless battery packs on the market right now and here's one that just came out from Belkin. The Qi2 Belkin Boost Charge Pro. <laughs> We'll do a charging speed test on iPhone and Android, and we'll also compare this to the only other Qi2 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack on the market right now, and that's from Anchor. I reviewed that one last month, comparing the difference between Qi2 and Qi1. Go check that video out if you like. I got this charger from Apple for $100. When it's available on Amazon, the link will be down below. I would have liked to buy both chargers to test both out, but I'm poor so I only got one. Sadly, the 5K variant only charges at 7.5 watts, even though it supports the upgraded Qi2 standard. One of the most important things that Qi2 gives us is the ability to charge at 15 watts wirelessly. The 10K charger that came out does support 15 watt wireless charging, so I went ahead and got that. I chalked this up to the size of the battery pack. A bigger size battery pack will be able to handle heat a lot better. So with the 5K variant that is a lot smaller, most likely can't handle the heat coming from 15 watts wireless charging. From what I've tested, the bigger battery packs manage heat a lot better than the smaller packs, and that's for Qi2 and Qi1. This is probably the reason why Anchor only has a bigger 10K Qi2 wireless charger and another thick 66K battery pack with a huge stand on the back, but they don't have a slimmer 5K battery pack. I was confused on why they skipped that because that's the one I would have bought. Now seeing that Belkin came out with a slim Qi2 battery pack but doesn't offer the 15 watts but only 7.5 watts leads me to believe that the slimmer packs just can't handle the heat coming from 15 watts and they're starting to see that. This is kind of bad news because we might not ever see a slimmer Qi2 battery pack that supports the desirable rate of 15 watt wireless charging. It looks like the 15 watt charging will only be utilized by accessories and not the slimmer wireless battery packs. In the box we get the manual but no USB type C cord. On this battery pack you don't get a screen like on the Anchor Mac go chi2 but you do get some indicator lights you get a kickstand to prop up your phone at first i was disappointed to see that there was no type c charger in the box but i noticed that there's a cord connected straight to the charger oh hell yeah in my older videos testing wireless battery packs i found that using a small type c cord to charge the phone instead of using the wireless transfer works 10 times better especially on android because android phones don't support magsafe or the 15 watt wireless transfer from qi2 charging i'm excited to see that belkin acknowledged this and went ahead and added a cord straight to the charger having this cord is also good for phones that don't have wireless charging at all like the nothing phone 2a a great phone by the way after getting a magnetic ring you can charge this phone similar to magsafe but with a cord and while doing this understand that you're not missing much because wireless charging technology is still slow Spoiler alert for the conclusion of this video, I highly recommend using a cord on Android anyways. The Belkin Boost Charge has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, it charges wirelessly at 15 watts, and it has 20 watts of PD wired charging. The iPhone 15 Pro Max has a 4,440 milliamp hour battery, full battery specs are listed here. Remember that the smaller the battery, the less time it takes to charge. iPhones usually have smaller batteries compared to similar sized Android phones. Also remember that charging fluctuates throughout the charge. I would love to have the extra equipment to test the live wattage, but I don't because I'm poor. Charging fluctuates depending on multiple things, like the temperature of the battery because after a while the battery gets hot and slows down the charging. The temperature of the phone because doing intensive tasks like playing a game heats up the phone and the chip slowing down the charging. Now let's get to the speed test. I slapped on the charger on the iPhone when it was at 7%. After 30 minutes the phone charged to 34%. After 2 hours the phone charged to 80% and after 3 hours the phone fully charged. When charging from 80% to 100%, there is software usually intact to slow down the charging speeds. This is to preserve the health of the battery, especially when charging wirelessly because of the extra heat that comes from that. So from my research, I would recommend when charging wirelessly to go ahead and stop charging at 80% because to get from 80% to 100% is going to take forever. 
here's a graph comparing this charger to the anchor charger of the same wattage just so we can have a good look. The Belkin charger did get noticeably hotter than the anchor charger but not too hot. I noticed at the 70% mark the Belkin charger slowed down the charging speeds significantly but from 0 to 50 the anchor charger and the Belkin charger were very similar. The Belkin may have slowed down due to heat, anchor does manage heat better. But surprisingly the Belkin had over 50% charge left on the battery after fully charging the iPhone. The anchor charger was usually left between 25 to 35 percent after fully charging the iPhone. This happened every time I tested it. When the cable is connected the Belkin charged the iPhone from 0 to 100 in about an hour and 45 minutes. On the Android side I tested this charger on the Nothing Phone 2. Another great phone by the way. It has a 4700 milliamp hour battery. The rest of the battery specs are listed out here. I used a case and a MagSafe ring to connect the charger. Unsurprisingly the phone charged incredibly slow taking over four and a half hours to fully charge the phone. This is depressing speeds because Android does not support MagSafe or Qi 2 so we don't get that 15 watt wireless charging. I will always recommend to use a short type C charger when charging on Android. This is what I do personally because I daily drive the Nothing Phone 2. Yes, I'm team Android, but I love the utility of MagSafe a lot, so much so that I made this video. Here's a graph of the charging speed with the wire connected. It charges the Android phone from 0 to 100 in about 1 hour and 45 minutes, almost 3 hours faster than when charging wirelessly. When using a short cable, you get the versatility of a detachable magnetic charger and also getting the pros of using fast wired charging. So now that we know this, is it worth getting a battery pack that supports the more expensive Qi 2 standard over a cheaper Qi 1 battery pack? Alright, that's it for this video. Like if you want to help me out. If not, that's cool. Comment down below if you have any questions. I'll respond to everybody. I will try to purchase and test every single new Qi 2 battery pack that comes out. So subscribe if you're interested in seeing that. Alright, peace.